This video is going to look a bit different because one of my lights that lights this bench has failed. So I've got a temporary light up here at the moment. It'll be a slightly different color. It'll be a different color rendering index, blah, blah, blah. And it's not as intense. So uh, that's going to affect how the video looks. Also noting that I'm not getting the huge big splashes of light I usually get from these couple of floodlights. So this is a light that I've I had for a long time, but I've retrofitted it uh, on more than one occasion over the last 10 years with new LEDs. This LED in here is a high CRI LED, rated 50 watts, but I'm running it from a 20 watt power supply. I have a new 20 watt power supply to stick in because the intermittent blinking out of this light at the back of the bench is most likely caused by the power supply. With the LEDs themselves, you've got one, two, three, four, five series strings. Sometimes when the bonds fail, and they do, it failed on one of these expensive high CRI lights, the bonds sometimes fail and you end up with strips going out, but not the whole lot. And that does hint at dying capacitors. So I have this other 50 watt light. I was looking for drivers. I couldn't find drivers, but I know that this one only draws 20 watts. So hopefully it's got a similar driver inside. Let's take the screws out and we'll see what's actually inside it. And if it's going to be a suitable retrofit in there, it'd be nice to use super good quality power supplies. But they're kind of hard to find. Uh, even when you pay a bit more for a power supply, it doesn't mean it's going to be better quality. So I'm just taking the screws out here. I shall shove that out the way here and take the screw out in shot so you can actually see something is happening in the background, not just screwdriver noises. The glass comes off. Oh, look at that tiny little power supply. Well, that is really small. Uh, this is going to be a super low class, electrically noisy driver, isn't it? And it's kind of, it's is it silicon down or is it a uh, hot melt? Hot melt would be great, but having said that, hot melt would be a terrible idea for things. I'm just going to poke at the probe. How does it feel? It feels a bit silicony. That's going to be quite hard to go off. Going to have to stick something under it. Like the spudger, perhaps. Right, okay, um, I'm going to see if I can find an alternative driver, but if not, I shall stick this one in, in place of that one. I kind of prefer the one that was in there before. Mm. This one, uh, if it's possible to get this stuff out, it says Spring Snow in the back. That's the supplier I got it from, most likely an eBay seller. If this potting compound comes up, we'll peel it back and we'll take a look at the actual circuit board once I've got, the, got everything back up and working again. Uh, I'm going to go and look for a better power supply. One moment, please. Slim pickings. For someone who likes lighting so much and is so many lighting things, I have a complete lack of uh, proper power supplies. I did find one that was relatively acceptable. It is a 20 watt uh, power supply designed for these LEDs, but it is just heat shrink sleeved. The one advantage is that it's stuffed with circuitry. It's, yeah, I can see like inrush limiters, so it's better circuitry. So that's what I'm going to use. I say that, I'll probably blow up. So I shall take this one out. When you're removing these, I've already got a wee red dot there, but I'm just going to augment it. Wee red dot, just to show which is positive. Avoids damaging LEDs by applying reverse polarity, because the gallium nitride LEDs are a little bit more susceptible to damage from that. That came off easier than expected, which is nice. Excellent. There's old power supply. We shall possibly take a look in this afterwards, if I can pick the stuff off it. We'll see if there's any obvious issues. This is not powered at the moment, it's completely unplugged. I just feel the need to say that. From a safety perspective, yeah. Me doing safety, that's kind of unusual. So I shall uh, strip these wires with a suitable wire stripper. I shall use this wire stripper. Hopefully these are actually, well that doesn't cut wires very well, that wire stripper. Hopefully these aren't copper coated aluminium. They could well be. Uh, hold on, I'm just gonna give it the twist test. Oh, not convinced. I think they are copper coated diamond and that is not great. I wonder if they'll cause problems in the uh, Vigoe type clone terminals. Clone cables in clone terminals. That's a perfect combination. Let us slip the wire up here. Note it's completely not twisted together. And pull it into the back and lock it down. That's probably just severed the wire as it clicked down. And then we shall uh, put the other wire in as well. And then we'll deal with the low voltage side. I could kind of stick that in, but I think I'll just hold it loosely in place with the, the glass cover. It's probably the best thing. Hmm, okay. Does it even fit properly? It kind of fits. I trimmed a bit of the uh, heat shrink sleeving off this. Let's trim these to size so they're not too long. 
So I'll trim that one to about that size. And this time I shall uh, strip it. It's soft silicone, so I shall just nibble with my side cutters and just basically slide that off. Just like that. I shall solder that connection on, I'll show tin it. If it tins, hopefully it is actually a tinnable metal. Mm, it's tinning, that's good. And I shall pop that onto the LED. Soon, hopefully, the colour will be restored to the bench and the brightness, because uh, the brightness is the thing that's really falling down at the moment. These, this light I've got is a linear light and it's also um, just uh, 20 watts, which is equivalent to just one of these. I've got two of these lighting the bench. Maybe I should look at new lighting. I did go online looking at power supplies and all the ones I could find are crappy little... Uh, I'll just do that with this. Uh, crappy little ones, smaller than this. Uh, and every, everyone else is just trying to push the driver on board, the super cheap ones that flicker horribly and are unsuitable for making videos. These aren't really twisting that well. I wonder what this is. Tinned aluminium, probably. Who knows? Mystery cable. So much mystery cable online these days. Buy locally from proper electrical distributors. Don't buy crap from eBay if you need something predictable. Because there are so many corners being cut, largely because people have invested in copper as a means to uh, make money and in doing so have destroyed the electrical industry in the process. Right, tell you what, I'm going to put the reflector on this. And that's going to, in fact, no, I'll just do it right now. I shall do it right now that there are only two screws, it being the classic Chinese product. And the earth is actually just pinched under here. So I shall try and pop these terminals down under here. Mm, I'll just rearrange everything a little bit in here. And the earth will now not want to stay put. Mm. I shall put a screw through here. And then through that. And this is where it's going to get most fumblesome. Yeah, it's going to get very fumbly. The wire's want, going to want to control where that uh, screw goes. I think that's it in position though. Is it screwing down? Yes, it is. Is the wire trapped? Yes, it is. Not an ideal electrical bond. Uh, what about the other one? Maybe I should take the screw out before I did that, but not to worry. I didn't. I put the screws in here just to park them out of the way, so I didn't lose them. Now, once I get this in place, I'm going to blow... Actually, I think that's a little speck of solder in the LED. I shall... Flick it off with uh, with something. There's another probe. I'll just use that probe just to flick that little speck of LED to the side. Flick it and see if I can send it into some crucial electrical position. Then grab that second screw. Put it in. Before I tighten this up fully, I'll just make sure it's aligned roughly with the LED. The LED roughly in the middle, which is good because sometimes there's a bit of leeway in them, a bit of spacing. Then theoretically... Um, I could power this up right now and see what happens. Let's turn it aside so it doesn't dazzle everybody. I'll just put it down like that. Oh, power supply's just dropped out. Let me just plug in that. Turn the switch on. And it is lit. Okay, that's a good result. Power is back off. I shall get the cover, pop it back on, and I'll put it back up, and then we'll take a look inside this if I can actually get the potting compound out. One moment, please. And normality has been resumed with hopefully no more glitching from that light. Now, I did take this apart, but I went the full hog. I made the full teardown photographs, reverse engineering schematic, so I shall actually put that in a separate video because otherwise this one will end up absolutely enormous. So I'll, I'll uh, release that in a couple of days. Uh, so, and in the meantime, the lighting is fixed, and that is the main thing. Now, hopefully this will last for a good length of time, and you can see the insides of this very soon.